joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of the pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues. His faithfulness continues. His faithfulness continues. His faithfulness continues. His faithfulness continues through all generations. 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 Through all generations.
for the worship today uh, and, and just realize that you are our lighthouse um, and that you can guide us you can direct us uh, as we're going through life storms dear God and so we just give you all the praise and all the glory for being a God who cares for us 
who loves us, who we can lean on. Your counsel will continually inform us and give us wisdom uh, and guide us. I just pray right now for all the people in our church uh, that are struggling with just maybe being confined more than they're used to being confined, dear God, that you would just bring joy and hope and peace into their life, dear God, that we would do a good job of ministering to each other. We thank you for how you're moving in our church's life and encouraging us. Um, and, and our church people encouraging each other, and even answering prayers that relates to people we've been praying for uh, o- over the last few weeks. We want to specifically list, lift up Sister Pat this morning and her family, uh, and, and we want to remember uh, all, the, all the people that have lost people during this time, dear God, uh, Sister Gloria. Uh, and we just ask that w- you would guide us, uh, that you would show us how we might be able to minister well to the, not only just people in our church, but people around us. So we lift up uh, our neighbors and the neighbors of our church members, dear God, just open doors for us to not only live out the gospel, but share the gospel. And right now, particularly, I just lift up Pastor Chris, dear God, is that you would just bless his words, that they would be an encouragement to us today and instruct us this morning. And dear God, just uh, thank you so much for the ministry of this church. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Thank you, Gina. Aloha, everybody at Allen. I hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you guys had a great time during that worship session. Thank you again to Gina for that. Don't adjust your computers. Don't adjust Facebook. You're not seeing things. I am actually filling in for Kenny this week. Uh, We're actually flipping roles. He's actually going to be doing a special message for the kids. So if you have kiddos, Please uh, continue watching after the message. He is going to be presenting a special message for you guys. So please, please uh, stay tuned for that. All right. Well, hey, today we're going to continue our walk uh, through Hebrews. Now, uh, before we dive all into that, uh, I kind of want to just chat with you for a little bit because, I mean, we don't get to hang out all that much. Uh, I want to talk to you guys about what me and Deanna have been doing during this quarantine. Now, I actually see this as a blessing. Uh, now, as some of you are aware, last May we got married, uh, and then we went on our honeymoon to D.C. Then we came back, and that same Saturday we went on a mission trip, and then we had camps later in the summer. And then uh, last semester, I actually started my last semester of college. Now, I actually traveled, excuse me, to more in order to take some of the classes in person. That took a lot of time. That took a lot of work. There was a lot of times I, excuse me, again, I had to stay up late. Uh, I had to uh, work hard in order to get some of the homework done. So this quarantine time has actually been a really good thing for me and her. We've been able to communicate a lot more. We've been able to spend a lot more time together. It's just been a really uh, good time in our household. And so what we've been doing, uh, as much as just talking and whatnot, we've been playing games. All right. What about you? What have you been doing during uh, this quarantine time? Comment down below. What are some things that you guys do to help pass time? For me and her, we like games. We have tons of games. We have Apples, Apples, Uno. We have uh, Clue, all kinds of stuff. But the one game that we've been uh, enjoying a lot here lately is Upwards. All right. Now, this is kind of like a Scrabble game where you're constantly trying to make words and whatnot, but you're building on words to get more points. Now, the first couple games, I'll admit, I won. All right. But then Deanna has just been whooping me. All right. And before we started doing all this, Deanna constantly made the suggestion that she hates competition. All right. But I can tell you this. She has a competitive side. And it's very cute and it's very adorable seeing her uh, get competitive during these times because we're constantly battling out. We're trying to get that last point to see who wins today. And so it's been really fun seeing that come out of her, all right? And humanity in general, we love competitions, all right? Think about your students. Some of your students play basketball, baseball, football, soccer. Uh, Some of you are in dance competitions. I mean, like, you guys know what it means to compete. You also have competition in the work. You know, you have a rival company, and so you're constantly trying to make sure that you're staying uh, competitive with them. And there's also things in life, like we uh, see that we uh, have one thing, but your you know, neighbor has something else, so you're like, well, I need to step up my game. 
you know. Uh, and so we constantly see competitiveness is in our nature. All right. The author, though, in Hebrews, he states that there really is no competition when it comes to Jesus and other people, especially angels, as we see in chapter two. There is no competition between Jesus and the angels. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm going to give you guys four reasons as to why Jesus is greater than all, than especially than the angels. So if you guys would uh, go with me to Hebrews chapter 2, we're going to start in verse 10, okay? We're going to start in verse 10. We're going to finish up chapter 2. And it says this, For it was fitting that he, talking about Jesus, uh, for whom and by whom all things exist in bringing many sons to glory should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregations, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put... Uh, my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. Since therefore the children share in the flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things and that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong uh, slavery. For surely it is not the angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God. To make, pro, uh, I have a hard time with this word, propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Now, I'm going to give you guys four reasons again as to why Jesus is greater than the angels. All right. First reason is he is the founder of our salvation. All right. Uh, now, angels uh, sometimes have been given the, the, the nickname guardian angel. All right. When I was younger, my first car that I had was a, I believe, a... 86 Sunbird. I'm not sure. My family will let me know if I'm wrong. But it was a Sunbird nonetheless. It was a very old car, very uh, kind of kind of jank, to be honest. But it was uh, really cheap. I was able to just uh, get it and it got me from point A to point B. Pretty simple. But I'm not a car guy. I don't know anything really about cars except that I know it needs gas. And it gets me, like I said, to point A to point B. Lo and behold, after uh, quite some time with, with this car, I started hearing a very loud, like, screeching noise. Kind of like uh, metal uh, hitting metal. I didn't understand it. Again, some time went by, and it just kept getting louder. I was like, man, this car's about to blow up on me. It's crazy. It got so loud that my parents could actually hear it in the house. And they actually told me, Chris, your brakes are horrible. I was like, well, I didn't know it was my brakes. So we took it over to, and I know some of you guys are thinking, wow, you're an idiot. <laughs> Just bear with me, okay? I, was, I, I don't do cars, all right? I took it over to my uncle's house, and he uh, lifted it up. He actually took the brakes off, and he was about to replace it, but he noticed one thing. He noticed that there was absolutely no brakes left on the brakes themselves. It was just metal, all right? There was nothing that should really stop uh, the car, all right? And so he came to me and he's like, Chris, you realize that you really didn't have any brakes whatsoever? It was just metal meeting metal. And I was like, no, I didn't know that. He's like, dude, you must have one great guardian angel, all right? Now, angels do have jobs and they have, uh, people have given them titles like guardian angels, but Jesus is something greater than even that. He is the founder of, of our salvation. And if you were to take that word founder and actually change it up a little bit, you can put in the words like developer, creator, 
engineer. The best way to kind of uh, modify it just a little bit is pioneer. He is the pioneer of our salvation. And actually, if you use that word, it fits perfectly because it means uh, is someone who goes before and leads the way. He is the one who leads to our salvation. This is the reason why Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life in John chapter 14, verse 6. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way. Because without Jesus, there is no salvation. All right, but I want us to kind of take re really look at that as well, because not only is he the founder of our salvation, he is the founder of our salvation through suffering. All right. Now, this term right here actually means a couple of things. It one means, you know, as we kind of are aware of the suffering that he went through on the cross for you and me. All right. But I want us to take, kind of take it a step further because it also means all the temptations and issues that he went through as he lived everyday life. All right. Every type of temptation that we've ever faced, he has faced before. All right. And that means uh, that means that we have to understand Jesus didn't just do this for himself. He didn't just say, you know, I want to make a trip down and be like uh, mankind and be tempted and die on the cross. Yeah, that sounds. No, he didn't do that for himself. He did that for you and me. All right. He is the reason why we have salvation. Angels didn't do that for us. All right. Jesus did. He is the founder of our salvation. The second reason as to why he is greater than the angels is because he's our brother, all right? In verses 11 through 15, it talks about how he came to be like us in every respect. He came and dwelt among us in the flesh and blood, all right? Now, uh, Mark, uh, uh, Martin Luther made a quote, and it says, The mystery of the humanity of Christ, that he sunk himself into our flesh, is beyond all human understanding, all right? Uh, C.S. Lewis actually talks about uh, this. He, he kind of made a story talking of, in the illustration of us uh, saying, you know, what if you had a dog, all right? What if you have a dog? Do you have a dog? If you have a dog, comment the name right now in the chat, all right? We want to know what is the name of your dog, all right? And you love this dog. You love this dog, but... It becomes sick. And the only way, the only way to save this dog is if you were to become a dog yourself. All right. Now, for some of you, you'd be like, yeah, I'll do that. But I want you to think about this. OK, if you were to try to become a dog, you're giving up quite a bit of stuff. You're giving up your humanity. You're giving up your job, which some of you are like, yeah. All right. Some of you will be giving up your hobbies. you will be giving up. Uh, being able to speak to another person, the ability to relate to another person, to be able to spend time with your loved ones. Would you be able to do that, give all that up to become a dog, to save your dog? That's an incredible thought to think of. But that's what Jesus did. He left heaven. He left the praises of all the angels that were singing to him day in and day out. He left his heavenly father to come dwell in flesh and live amongst us as a person. And it's an incredible thing to think about. He became our brother. All right. I'm personally the brother of two younger sisters. All right. And there's nothing I want to do for my sisters. All right. I love my sisters. And uh, I remember when I grew up, when I was growing up with them, uh, it got to the point where uh, my parents would allow us to walk uh, from school to home. It wasn't that far, but I would always find Dana. She's the second of the three of us. And then we, me and Dana would walk to country estates and we would get our youngest sister, Brittany, and we would walk home. But I would always make sure that they were behind me. All right. I wanted to make sure that I protected my younger sisters. I wanted to be the best big bro so that if, if anybody were to come at us, they had to go through me. I wanted to be a great big brother uh, to my sisters. All right. Jesus is our brother, but he also became a big brother in the sense that he took what, you know, protecting his, his siblings. He took that to the furthest extent. All right. It says, uh, 
uh, in verse tw- uh, tw- I mean, uh, 14 and 15. It says, since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things. All right, talking about the sufferings and the temptations that we all go through. All right, he's relating to us in our human flesh. That through death, he might destroy the one who has power of death, that is the devil. And deliver all those who through uh, fear of death were subject to lifelong uh, slavery. We have sinned. We have messed up. But Jesus came and took our place. He became our big brother. He, he said, I'm going to protect. I'm going to take care of what needs to be done. I want to step in and I'm going to pay their price. All right. His death was not caused by his own doing. His death was caused by the sins of man and women like you and me. All right. He took on our enemy. He took on our greatest enemy. Death is the greatest enemy to mankind. If you think back to Genesis, when God told uh, Adam and Eve, don't eat of this tree. Why? Because when you do, you will certainly die. You see, God created this, this, this world so that there may be life because he is the bringer of life. But yet, death entered because of us. But Jesus took care of that. Through his death and his resurrection, death, as said in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55, it says, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks, but thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's only through Jesus that we have salvation. His salvation uh, releases us from the power of sin, from the power of fear of death, and the bondage that we could have to the devil. He is our big brother. That is reason number two. And reason number three is that he is our helper. All right. As I mentioned earlier, angels uh, have jobs. Uh, not too long ago, uh, for a paper I had to do, I wrote about angels and the significance of angels and what they did. And it was, uh, it was crazy to me because I actually found out that angels really do have jobs. And one of them is to actually come down and be guardian angels for people like you and me. But Jesus became something even greater. He became our helper. He became our helper. So if we go back to uh, verse 16 of Hebrews chapter 2, it says, For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. That, that term right there, offspring of Abraham, that's talking about those of us who have put complete faith in Jesus Christ. All right, Abraham had complete faith in God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So it's, uh, those who share in his faith are those who become his offspring. So he's talking about uh, people like you and me. We get a chance right now as we live, we get a chance to experience something that angels don't. All right. And that is salvation. In 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, I want to read you guys a few verses. Uh, I mean, just a couple of verses. Um, and just actually just one. All right. Uh, so in First Peter chapter one, verses 10 through uh, four, I mean, uh, through 12, Peter talks about salvation concerning the salvation. The prophets who prophesied about the grace uh, that was to be yours, uh, search and acquire carefully. All right. So he's talking about salvation. All right. He's talking about the salvation that the prophets uh, looked forward to. And in verse 12, it says, things in which the angels long to look. The angels, uh, like us, some angels have fallen, all right? When Satan rebelled and some of the fallen angels fell with him, they did not receive salvation. The angels who are in heaven uh, sing praises and they are perfect, but they will never experience a, a relationship that you and I have with Jesus through his salvation. He lives and he comes and dwells within 
us. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. And so therefore, we have a very unique relationship with God. And the angels, it says that they long for it. But he didn't come to help the angels. He came to help you and me. But he also, once again, as a big brother, he took it a step further. And he not only became our helper, but he also became the high priest that we needed. All right. In verse 17, it says, therefore, he had uh, to be made like his brothers in every respect. Talking about he went through every trial, every temptation that we could ever possibly imagine so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest. Now, if I were to ask you, you know, describe Jesus. All right. If If I were to ask you in the comments down below, describe Jesus for me. What would you say? The author of Hebrews says the first thing of the first description of him is that he's merciful. All right. This uh, this talks about how this is God's predominant characteristic. This is God's attitude, his constant attitude towards humanity. And we can see that all throughout the Old Testament, that God was constantly showing mercy after mercy, even going back to the times of Noah, when he said that I repent, uh, that I even made mankind he still showed mercy by by saving noah and starting over with them he's constantly showing mercy and that's who jesus is he came and he dwelt among us so that he can understand better of what we're going through so that he can show even more mercy but not only that he is also uh, uh, called faithful all right jesus was and is and always will be perfect. Think about that. He will always be perfect. That means he will never fail. Now, there are some people who don't trust high priests back in the day because they were corrupted. Some people don't trust pastors because they're hypocrites, all right? But Jesus is our great high priest. He is our faithful, merciful, high priest. He will never fail. He will always be perfect faithful which leads us to verse 18 and it says for he uh, for because he himself has suffered when tempted he is able to help those who are being tempted he is our high priest and he actually the author makes references again in chapter 4 when it says since the, uh, in verse 14 since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens Jesus the son of God let us hold fast to our confession For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is able in every respect has been uh, tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy, merciful, and find grace, faithful, in times of need. He is merciful And he is faithful. He is our great high priest. Now, early on, I uh, I talked about competitions, uh, how me and Deanna are getting competitive during games and stuff like that. Mankind has this within our nature because we know what it means to lose. We lost. You and I, we have sinned. We have fallen short of what perfection is not Jesus Jesus won Jesus was completely perfect and in fact he says in John chapter 16 verse 33 he says uh, uh, in the world you will have tribulations but take heart I have overcome the world And I love this passage because he says that. But right before he says that, he says this. I have said these things to you so that in me you may have peace. I have said these things to you so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Reason number four is that he is an overcomer. You know what? If we're going to use the competition type of thing I would say Jesus is the champion he is the champion that we look to we love our winners we love our champions we look toward towards them for inspiration for hope 
Jesus is our champion. He is the one that we can go to in our times of need and he will be merciful. He will be faithful to us during those times because he knows what we go through. You are not alone during this time. You have a merciful and faithful champion by your side. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you today for uh, just this encouraging message that we have a high priest, we have a a champion in heaven who is the mediator, who is the go-betweener between you and us, that uh, that through him we have salvation. God, I pray that Uh, that we take time today to just sing praise and give thanks for who you really are. You are so incredible. You are so much greater than angels. You are so much greater than anything else in this world. And we love you for that. And so God, again, I just say thank you. Thank you for everything. And we love you. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. And the church family said, amen. Church family, don't give up during this time, all right? As we're uh, ending this whole quarantine thing, just know that you have a high priest, a champion in heaven who is fighting for you. We love you, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Hey, Allen Church, thanks for joining us today in worship. So glad you did. Hopefully it was a blessing to you, Chris. Great job. And uh, anyway, a few announcements we want to go over. Uh, And while I do it, Chris is going to try five reverse micans on the back. You might be able, let's do ten. Okay. Let's do ten because I think it'll take that long. So do ten reverse micans while we do announcements. You guys keep count. All right, tonight, 5 p.m., Facebook Live, we are going to, me and Gina will be on with you guys, and we just have conversations. We share scripture, um, and we uh, pray together, share prayer requests, and just kind of that kind of thing. But 5 p.m. tonight on uh, Facebook. Also, you can check our services out on allenchurch.com and YouTube. Um, So check that out as well. Also, uh, if you want a DVD of today's service, be sure to get a hold of me or Pastor Chris and we will get that to you. Um, And so we're super excited about that. We put signs in people's yards. If you didn't get a sign, two things you need to do. Look in your neighbor's yard and see if we got it wrong by by a yard. Also, give us a call or a text. We want to get a a sign in your yard, um, and maybe we couldn't find your address. So uh, be sure to get a hold of us if you did not get one of those blue and white signs in your yard. All right, so you now know how many times I made it. You guys help keep count. Kenny's in the chat. While he's doing that, I'm going to share some stuff about what's going on with students and kids. Uh, As of right now, uh, just giving you guys a heads up, Camp for the students has been postponed. Uh, We have no information about uh, dates or when it could uh, come back. So just bear with us as we go through that and we'll get uh, get you guys information out as soon as we get it. Uh, Secondly, we have Zoom on Wednesdays. Be sure to be a part of that. We've been having some great times. We're talking about what do disciples do uh, when they were with Jesus. So be a part of that on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. as well. And those students who uh, helped make that video at the beginning of the service, thank you guys so much. It was awesome uh, seeing you guys do that. Kenny's uh, doing something with the basketball behind me. So, yes, thank you guys.
Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise Him in the heights above, praise Him all His angels, praise Him all His heavenly hosts, praise Him sun and moon, praise Him all you shining stars, praise Him you highest heavens and you waters above the
good morning, Allen kids. Catch your breath after all that singing. Thank you, Chris and Deanna, for leading us in worship. Now, if you're wondering why this old guy is on your TV at this point or on your computer or on your phone, me and Chris actually switched spots. So he was teaching for the uh, older crowd, and I told him I'd teach kids' church, which I love. So anyway, so we're going to start with a game, all right? And I'm going to give you some quotes from one of these three characters. So we got Minnie. We got Winnie and we got Mickey. See the Mickey ears right here? Uh, and so I'm going to say a quote and see if you can figure out which one of these characters uh, said that. Okay, ready? Here's the first one. I'm just so lucky that I get to be here with all of you today. Who's that quote from? Uh, 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 uh. Minnie, if you said Minnie, one point for you. Free suckers, okay? All right, next quote. People say nothing is impossible, but I do nothing every day. Who said that? Minnie, Minnie, or Winnie? If you said Winnie the Pooh, that's another point for you or two if you've got them both right. Free suckers. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Catch them as you go. Okay, here's the next one. Ready? Say it with me. Is he turning around? Don't turn around, Winnie. Say it with me. Miska Muska. Miska Muska. Is that Minnie or, yeah, Mi- Mickey? Minnie or Winnie? Which one? If you said Mickey, you are correct again. More suckers. Okay, here we go. Here's the next one. Oh, bother. Oh, bother. Now, this is the tiebreaker. If you're all tied, this is the last one. Hopefully, this will break the tie. Was that Minnie, Mickey, or Winnie? It's actually the easiest one, I think. Oh, bother. It was Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh said that. So hopefully you got them all right. More suckers for everybody. All right. I'm going to let my friends get down. There we go. You guys sit down. Sit those down right there. You guys like, like making voices. I love making voices. I'm terrible at it, but I like trying to impersonate other people. Uh, and, and I love the kind of game we just played where I try to remember uh, who said those specific words. I don't know. There's something about it I just really um, enjoy doing. So it's not just the words that we remember people saying. Sometimes it's even the way their voice sounds. Like probably if you're in a, uh, a room with a bunch of people and you hear your mom or your dad saying something, you can recognize their voice even if they're not talking to you because you know their voice so well. Now that whole idea of recognizing voice and recognizing words has a lot to do with what we're talking about today. And, and it comes in the frame of, of two, two kind of characters, you might say. The first is a shepherd and, and the second is sheep. Now do you know what a shepherd is? If you do, tell somebody in the room with you right now what a shepherd is. What, is a, what does a shepherd do? Uh, well, if you said that a shepherd helps animals like herd animals and watch over animals, you are exactly correct. Specifically, we tend to think of shepherds as it relates to sheep, that they watch and oversee and guide and guard uh, flocks of sheep. Is it flocks or herds or a haggle? It's not a haggle. A gaggle? No, I think it's flocks or herds. Either way, sheep, they, they oversee sheep. Now, can you think of some characters in the Bible, people that we learn about in the Bible that were shepherds? Well, if you mentioned um, Abraham, good job. If you mentioned Jacob, good job. If you mentioned Moses, remember, he, he watched over sheep for a while. Or you mentioned King David. Those are all people in the Bible that we know were actually were shepherds um, at one time. David, probably one of the more famous uh, of all those, knowing that he was the shepherd king. Uh, We also learn a lot about uh, Jesus in the New Testament, in the Gospels, and he's referred to as the good shepherd. And we're going to learn why here in just a second. One of my favorite movies involving sheep, and I don't know a lot of them, to be completely honest, is the movie Babe. I love Babe. Raise your hand if you've seen Babe. About the pig that becomes a sheep herder, and he talks to the sheep. Uh, And when he speaks to the sheep, because he's so nice and kind and polite, the sheep do what he says. Matter of fact, he becomes a champion uh, sheep pig. It's the weirdest thing ever, but it's a great movie. And another example of the idea of what we're talking about today is that sheep listen to the voice of the shepherd. Here's what John 10, 4 says. 
It says, his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Let me say that again. His sheep, okay, speaking of a shepherd, speaking of Jesus, his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Now, the reality is he's not talking about actual sheep here. It's drawn the picture that Jesus is, is the great shepherd and that we as his followers are his sheep. He is the shepherd, and we follow him like sheep would follow a shepherd. Now, when it says here that sheep follow because they know the shepherd's voice, this is the reality how, of the relationship between sheep and, and shepherds. There's a great video uh, on YouTube uh, that shows how sheep follow a shepherd's voice. Maybe we'll put the link in the comments or, or in the section uh, uh, where, you sit, where you're watching this video and ask your parents if you can watch it because it is a great video. And in the video, there are these tourists and there's this uh, bunch of sheep on the, out in the field and they're trying to call the sheep like the shepherd calls the sheep. And the sheep hardly budge at all. But when the shepherd walks up in a 1980s looking windbreaker, I might add, if I remember correctly, and he starts calling the sheep, the sheep immediately perk up and look around and start flocking towards the shepherd because they know his voice. He's the one that takes care of them. He's the one that keeps them safe. He's the one that watches over them at night. He is their caretaker. They've learned his voice and they've learned to trust him. So when this passage says, sheep follow because they know their shepherd's voice, that's exact. If there were shepherds in the crowd when Jesus was saying these things, they would have went, yep, that's exactly how it is. So who is our shepherd? Jesus is our shepherd. And so if he is our shepherd, then we're supposed to know his voice. We're supposed to know his words. Just like some of you knew uh, oh bother was a Winnie the Pooh phrase because you were familiar with it, you'd heard it before. In the same way, we're supposed to learn the words and the voice and the sound of Jesus, not only through the word of God, but as he speaks to us. And so that's one of the reasons we open the Bible and we read from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, one of the four gospels, and we learn about the life of Jesus. And we learn about his teachings and what he said and how he told us to live our life, how he told us to treat people and, and love people, how we're to love and honor and worship and, and, uh, our God, how we're supposed to respect our, our mom, our mother, and our father. We learn these words and we remember these are the words of Jesus, our shepherd, and so we're supposed to follow them. So one of the ways we hear his voice is through the, through the Bible. We, we read the Bible, Genesis, all the way through Revelations, and we learn the words of God. And so we follow God better when we know his words. But he also speaks to us through our heart, or our soul, where the Holy Spirit lives. And, and so the Holy Spirit is continually speaking to us. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you were trying to figure out what was right and what was wrong. And, and maybe you knew what was right and what was wrong, and you were being tempted to do the wrong thing, but something inside you said, oh, no, maybe you shouldn't do that. Maybe it was how you're treating your brother or sister, how you're interacting with your mom or dad, or, or when we were still, when you guys were still going to school, how you were acting on a playground or in the classroom or at a family member's house or just hanging out in the neighborhood, and you're tempted to do the wrong thing, but then something in you says, no, let's, let's do the right thing. That's the Holy Spirit. That's God. That's the great shepherd speaking to you. And scripture says if we're going to call ourselves followers of Jesus, then we've got to know and listen for the voice of Jesus and recognize it. Because we know just like the shepherd is there to care for the sheep and protect the sheep, Jesus is speaking to us because he wants to take care of us and he wants to protect us. So trust that your shepherd today, know his voice, and every week of your life learn more and more about the voice of God, both through the word of God and the Holy Spirit speaking to you, and you'll be cared for, and you'll be protected, and you'll be able to follow Jesus better every day. Let's pray. God, I thank you for being our great shepherd. I thank you for our, your son, Jesus Christ. And I just pray for the, the kids that are watching this and the adults that are watching this. Help us to grow more and more aware and, and comfortable with the words of God and hearing God speak to us. So that as we're trying to live our life and do it in a way that honors you, uh, we'll understand that you're trying to guide us all along the way. In the process of guiding us, if we'll listen to your voice and not get distracted from us, 
you'll guide us down the right path. And it will bring goodness and blessing not only to our lives, but the lives of the people around us. So help this, these kids have a great week and an awesome week and, and just grow their relationship with their, all their family and their friends they're interacting with. And just be with all the people that are sick with what's going on in the world um, and all the things that are changing. Help us to have patience and still be loving to each other. We ask these things in your name and we all say, Amen. You guys have a great week. Uh, Brother Chris will be back next week. See ya.